Self-Learning Module for Grade 8 Quarter 1, Week 2 Arts. In this module, you are expected to identify the countries in Southeast Asia, understand the nature of fabrics and attires in Southeast Asia and how they affect the life and culture of the people, analyze how the elements of arts and principles of designs are applied in Southeast Asian arts, and in the making of crops and artifacts in Southeast Asian countries, you are expected to incorporate the design, form, and spirit of Southeast Asian artifacts and objects in one's creations through using localized materials. Before we proceed on our lesson in arts, let's have a look back on the elements and principles of arts. For the arts elements, we have the color, value, line, shape, texture, space, and form. While the principles are the contrast, repetition and pattern, emphasis, balance, movement or rhythm, and unity. In Southeast Asia, particularly in Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei, they are commonly known in making fabrics. These fabrics have their own unique designs and techniques. In Thailand, Thai silk is produced from the cocoons of Thai silkworms. It is mainly produced in Korat, which is the center of the silk industry in Thailand. Thai weavers from the region raise the caterpillars on the steady diet of mulberry leaves. Today, Thai silk making is one of the finest arts in the world, a product of a unique manufacturing process and bearing unique patterns and colors. In Cambodia, silk weaving dates to as early as the first century since textiles were used for trading. Modern textiles have traces of motifs imitating clothing details on ancient stone sculptures. Sampot is the national garment and traditional dress of Cambodia. One of their finest crops is the Krama, the traditional Czech scarves worn almost universally by Cambodians that is made up of cotton. Cotton textiles have also played a significant role in Cambodian culture. Though today, Cambodian imports most of its cotton, traditionally woven cotton remains popular. There are two main types of Cambodian weaving. One is ikat technique. To create patterns, weavers tie and dye portions of web yarns before weaving begins. Patterns are diverse and vary by region. Common motifs include lattice, stars, and spots. Number two is an even twill. It yields single or two color fabrics, which are produced by weaving three threads so that the color of one thread dominates on the other side of the fabric, while the two others determine the color of the reverse side. Traditionally, Cambodian textiles have employed natural dyes coming from insect nests, which have red dye, indigo, which have blue dye, prohook bark, yellow and green dye, and the ebony bark, which have the black dye. According to Lao tradition, Stories of their history were not passed on orally nor was it written. They were woven. Strand by strand, Lao stories were weaved in the intricate dance patterns and motifs of textiles. Unfortunately, some are elaborately fantastic and the motifs so cryptic. That is, many cases only the weaver can accurately interpret the story. In Laos, the most diverse stories are the ones woven into a sin. Sin, the Lao woman's traditional ankle-long skirt, whose form is undeniable but whose patterns are unique to each skirt. Though the skirt looks simple and elegant, 
It is traditional that every woman in Laos weaves all the scenes she would wear throughout her lifetime. Golden thread silks were worn in Vietnam. Many of our Vietnamese fabrics originated from Ha Dong, the center of weaving and sericulture silkworm production, for centuries. Old jacquard looms are still used, weaving pattern containing centuries-old symbols and characters. Some popular Vietnamese fabrics ranges are Shantung Tapeya, Bengaling Weave, and Ebony Satin an all-natural lustrous silk hand-woven in southern Vietnam and naturally dyed using ebony fruit pods. The fabric that is most common to Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei is the batik. The term batik is an Indonesian Malay word believed to be related to the Malay word titik, which means point, dot or drop. The drop actions refers to the process of dyeing the fabric by making use of the resist technique. Covering areas of cloth with a dye resistant substance, usually hat wax, to prevent them from absorbing colors. This technique has been taught for over a thousand years. There are two categories of batik designs geometric motifs, and preform designs. Modern batik designs depend on the creativity of their designers. Naturalistic motifs like leaves, flowers, and birds have been utilized to create elaborate and intricate designs. Indonesia's kebaya and batik shirts, which are the upper garments, serve as the national costumes paired with kemben and sarong, a cloth wrapped around in hips. Their designs are intricate with flowers, geometric shapes, or animals depending on regional traditions. Silk thin cotton, semi-transparent nylon, or polyester materials is used in the primary, secondary, and tertiary colors, and pastels is used in coloring. They harmonize it with the earth colors and their monochromes. As you can see in the picture, Indonesian women wearing kebaya, the national costume of Indonesia. In the middle, a Java native wearing kemben. And the last picture shows the Indonesian women wearing their sarong. In Malaysian batik, it has incorporated leaves and flowers to avoid the interpretation of human and animal image as idolatry. In accordance with the local Islamic doctrine, these make their marks in batik look similar to Indonesia. It is also famous for its geometric designs and spirals. There are two main types of batik. One is the hand-painted batik. The artist uses the canting, a small copper container with one or more different size pipes. And the other one is black printed batik, done by welding together strips of metal to form a metal block. The metal block is then dipped into molten wax and pressed against the fabric to make a pattern. In Singapore, the existence and use of batik has been recorded since 12th century but has receded in popularity through the years. Nowadays, batik is featured in as the uniform of flight attendants for the official flag carrier airlines of Singapore, Indonesia, and Malaysia. In Brunei, there is also a traditional textile called batik, but it is uniquely different from Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore. Its designs have their national flower, the simpur, sumboy sumboy or pitcher plant, and Brunei's traditional design of air mulay. Southeast Asian art is known for having its art deep-rooted to its heritage. 
may it be religion, history, obtained from freeing themselves from their colonizers, telling extraordinary tales of epics and myths, and long practiced traditions in their countries. Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Cambodia, and Singapore all have definite characteristics in regards of arts and crafts connected to their rich culture. For example, Indonesia is known for wood carving and leather puppets or wayang kulit, telling stories of Hindu epics and myths. Malaysia takes pride in their art of batik, which are intricate floral patterns made from natural dyes and are seen on traditional Malay clothing. Religion influences most of the sculpture in Thailand, like the Buddhist sculpture. Cambodia have several bas reliefs narrating their classical Khmer culture, which can be seen on the famous Angkor Wat Temple. And in Singapore, with its iconic Merlion.